Has science disproved Christianity? Well, you don't need to go too far to find somebody who will argue something like that. You know, Christianity and science are incompatible. Is it true? Well, it certainly would appear so, doesn't it? Uh, because uh, Christianity is very, very old. There are people centuries ago who believed in Christianity, uh, but they also believed in magic and unicorns and the Easter Bunny. So it's easy to see that Christianity is on the same level as that. But I don't think they're incompatible at all. In fact, it's a very personal thing for me. Uh, I, I hold a degree, actually I hold two degrees in theology, but I also hold a degree in science. And I love science. In fact, I study science for fun. My wife thinks I'm weird, but I do. I love science. And these two things are not incompatible at all. So how do we bring it together? Well, let me tell you a story about Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Obviously, it's a made up story because they're fictional characters. But one day, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson were out camping. And in the middle of the night, Sherlock Holmes wakes up Watson, goes, Watson, Watson. Watson kind of wakes up and goes, yeah, well, what is it, Holmes? He goes, Watson, what do you see? And Watson kind of opens his eyes and, and he looks up and he just sees the stars and he thinks, ah, oh, this is going to be one of those, those things. And so, so he says, um, Holmes, I, I see the stars. And Holmes says, what does that tell you? And Watson goes, ah, oh, I hate playing this game, but okay, all right. Well, let, I, you know what? I'm going to cover all the bases. So he goes, well, well, Holmes, it's, uh, if I can see the stars, it means it's a, a Meteorologically speaking, it's a fine night. Chronologically speaking, I'm guessing it's probably at three o'clock in the morning. Astronomically speaking, I think I'm looking at the Milky Way. Astrologically speaking, Venus is entering Sagittarius. I think that kind of covered all of his, his options there. And then there was just silence. And Holmes turns to Watson and says, Watson, you've missed the obvious. Watson's going, what could I possibly have missed? Uh, he goes, well, well what, what is that, Holmes? Holmes says, Watson, somebody's stolen our tent. Now, everything that Holmes and Watson actually said were true. They were all different ways of seeing the same piece of evidence. Uh, meteorologically speaking, chronologically speaking, astronomically speaking, even astrologically speaking, and the fact that someone actually had stolen their tent. But they're all different ways of looking at the same piece of knowledge. And philosophically, this is called epistemology. It's the study of how do we actually know things. And science and Christianity are actually seeking to know different things. Science was actually set out, uh, the modern science, uh, scientific method that we have, actually set out to study what was observable. In fact, the philosophers put it into two different categories. They said there was the phenomenal, and they were the things that we could actually see and touch and observe. And there was another set of things called the noumenal, which were things that were true, but we couldn't see. Things like love, things like um, even mathematics that were part of that noumenal kind of area. And so there were different ways of looking at things. Now, Christianity is looking at relationships. It's looking at how do we relate to God? And in Genesis 1 and 2, actually what's really important here is not how many days or what was going on, but actually the relationships between God, people, and the world. And, and what did that look like? And what, was that, what did God intend for that to look like? It's all about the relationships. And so if we try and come to some of these parts of the Bible with questions about mechanics and how do things happen the same way we would with science, we're, we're actually going to fail. Of course, Science doesn't answer all of our questions. Uh, science, for example, uh, will look at something that is observable, repeatable, and explainable. They're the three things that you need for a scientific experiment. But not everything fits that category, does it? I mean, think about history. Uh, history, uh, at times, is not observable, particularly if it was an event that happened a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, it's rarely repeatable, and sometimes it's not even explainable. Does that mean it's not true? No, it's just a different epistemological way of looking at the world. Now, why then would science and Christianity be at odds? Well, there were a couple of different debates throughout history that have kind of raised this. One of them was uh, Galileo versus the Roman Catholic Church. Another was in 1860, the debate between uh, Wilberforce, uh, Samuel Wilberforce, who was a bishop, and another guy called Thomas Huxley. 
But if you go back and you look at these debates, and I'm not gonna go through them in detail now, but if you go back and look at the debates, actually what you find is it's not so much about science versus Christianity, but actually there's political things that are going on here. For Galileo, it was the fact that the Roman Catholic Church wanted to, to have a go at someone because they had lost so much power during the Reformation. Uh, for Huxley and for Wilberforce, the debate was more about uh, a group called the X Club, which is the coolest club ever, but the X Club who was trying to gain uh, political power in the scientific community. So often these debates are more to do with politics than they are about the truth. But what does that mean for, for science and Christianity? Let's come back to what, the, the, you know, how does this all fit together? In one sense, seeing the world and seeing the phenomenal world that we have uh, it, it's great, but it doesn't actually prove God one way or the other. I mean, you just look at the Bible. For example, the Bible says uh, in Psalm 8, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Though through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence your foes and the avenger. And when I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. See, on one hand, David looks back and he says, wow, I look at the world and I see what a great God you are. But then we can move to, say, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, where Paul says, uh, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been see clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him of God nor gave thanks to him. You see, you can, you can uh, believe in God and see the world and go, wow, that's amazing. Or you can not believe in God and see the world and go, well, I just don't believe in God. Science doesn't actually help us one way or the other. Actually, where we really need to go, if we want to go to a faculty at the university, the faculty that we need to go to is not science, it's history. Because one of the claims of Christianity is that God has entered into history through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, did that happen or did that not? That's a whole different question. And that we need to actually look at, not from a scientific point of view, but from an historical point of view. And the best way to do that is to start by reading through one of the Gospels. And I want to encourage you and challenge you to do that. If you have not done that as an adult, read through a Gospel and see, is this history? Is this true?